Hey everyone, it's Chris Shelley, and we're talking about uniform circular motion in auto racing. So I'm going to be using iRacing as an example, but this should apply in other racing games and in real life, depending on physics assumptions. And we're going to essentially break down the fundamental part of turning in motorsport. So the goal today is, of today's video is to talk about uniform circular motion so you can have a good fundamental baseline of understanding uh, driving techniques and skills and understanding what the racing line is. So when you can understand those, you'll also be able to understand more advanced topics and when we start deviating away from this one specific special case scenario of uniform circular motion, you'll know what I'm talking about and you'll have a good physical grasp of what is really going on when your car is turning as a driver. To describe circular motion, we need to have a few assumptions. We're going to assume constant velocity constant force and that force is only towards the turning and you're turning about a certain point so if you look at the bottom right you can see my speed my throttle my brake input i'm not using any brake i'm using about 22 percent for throttle and i'm going about 74 miles an hour so i'm going in essentially a circle i'm not gaining speed i'm not losing speed i'm just turning and then just keeping enough gas so i don't lose speed from any friction or anything this is uniform circular motion. You're going at you're going at constant speed, turning. So in that state, we have to have a few more things that that I'm going to talk about before we really understand the consequences of uniform circular motion. First thing to understand is Newton's second law, right? If you've taken any sort of physics class or science class, you might have heard of this. So mass being just a measure of how much stuff there is, how much matter there is. How, uh, how much thing, how much you're trying to move, and acceleration is how much essentially it's moving. So you have a force that's pushing on it. And in the context of our car, your, your mass is the car itself. The force is the force the tires are allowing the allowing the car to turn, and acceleration is how it's changing speed or direction. Now for uniform circular motion, we know that acceleration has a relationship with the way we're cornering. We have the speed and we have a radius, a turning point. So you're just turning, when you're driving your car, you're turning about a point. Here at this track, it's just that little center point there with the red and blue with, pit, my, with my pit guy standing there. That's the, essentially the point I'm turning about. That is the radius. You can, so now that you're in uniform circular motion, you know that your acceleration is just going to be equal to your speed squared divided by the radius. So acceleration equals V squared over R. This means that when you speed up, that you have to have a larger radius. If you're gonna assume you're gonna have the same acceleration, or in other words, for the same amount of force from the tires that's providing grip, you're going to have to have a trade-off between speed and how tight or how sharp of a corner you're going to make. So, for example, here, earlier you saw I was going much lower in the corner, having a much smaller radius. I was going about 73 miles an hour. Now I'm going all the way out here to the very edge of the track and trying to do a uniform circular motion here. You can see right now I'm going about 107, 108 miles an hour. 109 miles an hour. That's still uniform circular motion. We, just, we increased our speed, but we also increased our radius. So we still have that A equals B squared over R being true. This is the trade-off, and this is essentially what you're having to balance when you're developing your racing line. You want to go as fast as possible, right? But to do that, you have to take up more track because you're working with a limited amount of grip. All right, so here I am at a different track. This is a real track. This, says, this time it's Auto Club Speedway. And let's put this idea to the test. You want to use the, all the tracks. So here, this is a good corner. I get much lower down to the track and then call all the way back up. That's how you maximize your rate, uh, maximize your turning radius. When you have a higher turning radius, 
that means you can carry more speed, right? You want to go fast, right? We want to we want to have fast lap times. When you're racing, that the whole goal is to balance distance traveled versus the speed you travel in order to have the fastest lap time possible. So to do that, you want to use all the track that you race track that you can, but you also don't want to use don't want to do it in a way that takes up too much time. Now we're not really doing true uniform circular motion through these corners. All right, I, I want to say that right now so you understand because we're gaining speed, we're losing speed, uh, etc. What we are doing is that you can approximate it as, say, a uniform circular motion. And when you do that, you can still understand that you want a very big radius and you also want to carry as much speed as possible. And you're actually getting a bigger radius when you're entering, coming into the corner high and then ducking down low into the corner like you see here and then coming back up coming off the corner that's that's what forms the racing line the idea that you're balancing your speed versus the turning radius because you're only given a fixed amount of force let's go to one more track all right so here we are a new track at richmond richmond raceway instead of a two mile track like auto club was this is three quarters of a mile racetrack a lot a uh, lot smaller a lot tighter radius and that means a lot less cornering speed right before we were doing like 160 through those corners here we're doing like what 95 95 99 maybe if we're lucky that's the difference that's and that's that's the balance of the speed versus your cornering radius and also remember it's not linearly related to just because you double your speed doesn't mean all you need to do is double the radius right if you double the speed in order to make that corner with the same amount of grip you need to have a, a four times bigger radius so that's something you need to consider but look you still want to do the racing line right and when I say the racing line, you're still making the track as wide as you can, making the track have a wide a race radius as you can, making your car and your, the path you take have the widest radius you can. That's still the geometric racing line for uniform and how uniform circular motion helps you get around the track. So let's look at the data and you might find something a little bit interesting, right? In the assumptions of uniform circular motion, we may, we determined that we're going to go constant velocity, right? And that we're going to have constant forces on the car. So when we look at the data, you'll see, and I'm putting the graph up on the screen, we had more lateral acceleration right and lateral acceleration here is just the acceleration we have from turning it's centripetal acceleration as well for our for our purposes we have more acceler more acceleration at california the two mile track where we're going much faster than the corners is somehow we have more acceleration and the reason for that is aerodynamics aerodynamic forces help push the car down into the track and give the car more grip and that means you have more force to work with which means you can have either more speed through the corner of the same radius or take a tighter radius with higher speed than you otherwise would have so that's what i said that's why i'm saying okay well you have you have uniform circular acceleration and forms the basis of it forms the fundamentals of your racing line and you have some aspects where your racing doesn't quite go that way most cars nowadays are pretty aerodynamic dependent so once you get to those really high speeds you're going to see that the differences between high speed cornering at say 160 miles an hour versus lower speed cornering at about 99 miles an hour so that's the main difference but either way the principle of trying to make your radius as wide as possible while carrying as much speed is still applying. 
Um, the racing line is essentially just balancing distance traveled versus speed of travel. And you're going to do that fundamentally. The best place to start is with the geometric racing line. So thank you for watching. I'll have more videos on this going in depth on how to become a better uh, sim racer. And hopefully those tips will carry over, over to other games as well, not just iRacing. Um, please like and subscribe for more. A bit of a different video this time. Actually, it's to pause to talk about stuff, show some data and everything. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think, if you have any other questions. And see you next time. Thanks for watching.